Hey everyone, it's Ardeth, and I'm here today with my final post as the October guest designer for Neat and Tangled. It's been a blast, and I really want to thank the team for inviting me to do this. Today I have a snowflake card that I made using the Flower Medallion Builder set. That's right, a snowflake, out of flowers. I love using stamps in different ways, and a set with a bunch of different solid pieces is perfect for playing with in a new way. Since snowflakes are six-sided, and I'm geometrically challenged when it comes to figuring out angles, I stamped the six-petal flower and created a mask to use as a placeholder and guide for the rest of my stamping. I used repositionable adhesive to stick the mask to my panel of white cardstock, and then I got out some blue inks so that I could do some rock and roll stamping. I wanted the snowflake to have the darkest blue in the center, and then get lighter toward the edges. I inked up the whole stamp with the lighter shade of blue, and then I rolled the bottom end of it in the darker shade before stamping it, with the base sitting between two of the flower petals. I cleaned and dried the stamp, and then I did it again. Inking the stamp this way means you won't contaminate the lighter ink with the darker. I worked my way around all six of the petals, rocking and rolling and cleaning and drying, until I had it all finished. I found it easiest if I turned the cardstock so that I was always stamping upwards, if you know what I mean. Then I got out a lighter shade of blue, and I followed the same process again. I inked it up with the lighter ink, rock and rolled with the darker, and stamped it down, this time between the two previous impressions. Now I personally think that snow needs to sparkle, so I got out some embossing ink and I inked up the stamp and overstamped all 12 of the blue impressions. I made sure the stamp was really clean to start so that I wouldn't get blue ink on my embossing ink. I stamped over top of each leaf pattern and I wasn't too worried about getting it exactly right. This embossing powder is clear and sparkly, so no one will notice if it's slightly off. And you'll notice that I didn't use my anti-static pouch. Again, I figured any stray sparkle would fit right in on this card. I sprinkled the powder over the snowflake and heated it until it was all melted. You can see that it really sparkles. I chose a sentiment from Berry Mary. I almost always stamp my sentiments in black but I decided this time to tie the sentiment to the snowflake by using the same dark blue ink and embossing it as well. Again, I made sure the stamp was very clean before using the embossing ink, and this time, because I used my Misty, I knew that it would stamp exactly in the same spot. I poured more powder over the sentiment, and then I heated it in my foil-lined shoebox lid. To give this card something a little extra, I grabbed the lightest blue ink and a blending brush, and I very, very lightly blended along the edges. I pounced the brush in the ink and then took most of it off on my craft mat before blending onto the very edge of the panel. Rather than getting more ink from the ink pad, I tried just picking it up from the craft mat. At this point of the process, I really didn't want any blending bloopers. To finish the card, I popped the panel up onto a white card base with foam tape, and I added a few sparkling clear confetti sequins. It really didn't need much more. That sparkly embossing powder is so pretty. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you've enjoyed my neat and tangled posts this month, and maybe even been inspired by some of my work. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.